So, I guess we can start. Welcome everybody to my presentation, which has a lovely long name, how to provide a real-time second screen experience with Drupal. Um, who of you says the second screen term? Who does this tell something? Who has heard of this? Who doesn't know at all what it is? Good, interesting, good, okay. So, first about me, um, I'm Michael. I'm head technology of Amazing Labs. Um, you find me on Drupal.org with Schnitzel or on Twitter with Schnitzel, and if you want to send me an email, that's it. Um, about Amazing Labs, we are 16 people right now. We are based in Zurich, and we are a Drupal shop, a Drupal only shop, so we only develop Drupal. We um, consist of mostly development team, which um, depends on how you count between eight to nine people. Um, I'm doing the tech lead, so I'm checking that all the sites are built as the customer wants, and then we have some project management and business, um, which handles the other stuff. And a bit special about us, we have designers in-house, because we, um, with our own website itself, and also um, we just want to have really nice websites, and we found it really working well that actually the designer and the themer are working in the same office. So if the themer has a question, then they can ask them directly. And especially with responsive websites, where we don't even do designs for the responsive site. So we only do designs for either mobile or desktop, but not the other breakpoints. Um, it's really important that the designer is close to the themer that they can discuss, etc. Of course, sometimes it doesn't work because the, uh, the customer already has a design. So, but then we find ways that this will work out. Um, as I said, we are based in Zurich, but uh, not everybody works in Zurich. We have two people in Texas and one person in, um, in Russia, which is um, mostly based because of visa issues, that it's not so easy to get people to Switzerland, because obviously everybody wants to come to Switzerland, so the government makes some restrictions. And, um, but also interesting is that you have seven hours of time delay which sometimes can be really interesting that you can work during the day, give something over to Texas, they work in our night, and then in the morning you can check it again. But it makes it really hard to organize stuff because people are not awake all the time. Um, yes. But let's come to the voice of Switzerland. Um, who of you knows what the voice is? Okay, so um, it's a talent show, started in the US. Um, and as you know, it's like all this talent show thing is, but um, it's basically the idea is to only show talents which can really sing. So there is no like bad thing, the people are first selected and then they are on stage and they're singing. And the idea is that um, the people are not, or the, the jury which chooses the, the talents, they don't see them, they can only hear them. So that's the whole thing about the, the voice. And, um, and then later on, of course, when they say, yes, I want you to have in my team, they turn around and they, they can see them, but it's all more about the voice. And um, it was first in the US and it spread it out as a licensing thingy all over the world and almost every country has now a voice. And Swiss television, SRF, um, Swiss radio and television, I have to say, um, they decided they want to do this as well. And um, they asked us if we can do a website for them. So what's the case about the Voice of Switzerland for Swiss, for Swiss television and radio? First of all, we need a talent show website. So we need to show who the jury is. We need to show the talents. We need to show who was kicked out. We need to show news. We need to show videos, a lot of videos, pictures. So it's just a media-rich website itself. Um, nothing special about Drupal, so we had some taxonomy terms. Um, we had videos which you could assign to multiple people so, or multiple talents because sometimes they have um, an audience together, so then you want to see the video in both talents, etc. But then we wanted to have a thumbs up and down voting for the current talent, and here the second screen starts. So the idea was that well, while you are sitting at home, in front of the TV, people, they have their iPhones in their hand, their iPads, their notebooks, or they even have a television which can show a website. Not sure if this ever happened, but it's sometimes possible today. Um, 
So what we wanted to do is uh, to interact with them, to know more about them. And so we said, let's do a thumbs up and down voting. We will see this later for the current talent. So when a talent is singing on stage in live, the whole show was live, um, you can visit on your iPad the website and you can say, I like this or I don't like this. Because at the end, that's exactly the same as they will do later by the phone or the jury did. Because phoning, you could only do after every talent has finished to make it fair. But we could do this on the website. We can do this in real time. So when we wanted to do something that they can do to do the show, and then during the break, they have to call. That was the, the, the idea of the combination. And as it is, in the beginning, you think, well, that's super easy. Let's do this. And then you see all kind of different problems, which we come on later. Then we wanted to get them actually voting by the phone. Um, there was one big discussion that can, so basically, in the past, um, televisions, they use phone voting or SMS voting so um, to actually find out who really won. Um, the thing is, can we do this also by the website? And as you could imagine, there are some laws, especially in Switzerland, um, which decide like, how needs to be this measured. And one of the things is that you need to have some barrier to prevent fraud. And in the phone, it's basically that it's just charged, so you can call multiple times, but you pay like one dollar per call, and that's a barrier enough. On the website, there are actually no such laws yet which decide how this is, but of course they want to prevent fraud, because if you have three script kiddies, it would be really easily to, um, to fraud the whole system. And the only way we saw really is like registering, so that you can either log in via Facebook or whatever. Um, at the end, we decided to not do this, and take the risk, but actually the voting, which was happening on the website, was not taken in cons consideration for who actually comes to the next stage. Because we wanted to really know how many people do it if you only need to click. No registration needed, nothing at all. We just wanted to know. Of course, we had to prevent some fraud, and I will show you later how it works. Then we had a live stream. So some people were not at home, so they still wanted to see the live stream. And that was easy, it's a, it's a television company, so they had all the systems for them. Basically for us, we enable an iframe, it automatically checks, or you're on an iPad or whatever, and it shows the right live stream. So nothing really special for us. <laughs> and then during the week, as usual, they, you can win tickets to the next show, and um, that was also one of the parts for the website that people can go there and um, check it out. So, but a lot of talking, let's see it. Um, currently, it's, um, it's not live. I mean, the show is over. It will start in February again, but the website is still on there. So um, it's actually not... Um, so this part you see is not the live, like the second screen part, it's just a normal site. So you have some news, like um, they um, try to teaser now the next show, so you can already vote in here, um, like which person you would like to, to vote for already. Then you can go to the talents and you see actually who has won. Nicole Banneker won the last show. And you see um, in here, for example, what I talked about, all their videos. So basically when they add, add a video, they just say who is in there and it's automatically aggregated, fully automatic. Um, really nice to do with Drupal, with terms and yes, but so you also have a coaches page, you see the four coaches, you can cl click on them, you see their talents they had on the right side, you see the status of them, that they are out or not. Um, so yeah, then you have some videos obviously, what you could expect on a, on a talent show website. But let's see the, live, the second screen stuff. And I got here a test URL for this. So what you see now on the right side is a locked out user. So he visits the website and, um, and just is on the, on the site itself. On the left side, I'm logged in as an administration. If I know the right URL. So I'm logged in as administrator and I can now send them things. And that was one of the first things we found out. Um, when you do such a website, you don't want to let the people trigger the refresh button all the time. 
because they're sitting in front of the screen. They're watching the TV. So they're not like sitting on the iPad and refresh, refresh. So it had to happen automatically. And that was one of the first challenge we had. And basically, it worked with um, Ajax Paint. So um, what happens in here is that the content of each of these paints, so it's panel, panels and panelizer, the whole website, they refresh via Ajax. It's a polling mechanism, which just like every 10 seconds goes to the server and asks them, is there something new for you? And so I have here a dashboard, which is custom built, but at the end it just defines. So I can say like, okay, um, I would like to select this poll. The polls are normal nodes. They're created at the beginning. So before the show, they thought about what type of poll could we ever imagine to ask during the show. You select one here, you save it, and then um, on the right side, it takes about 10 seconds um, to update it. You saw now the text just changed, so it polls via, um, via Ajax. This um, was not only for this polling mechanism, we also had some text things, which was also interesting because they realized after a couple of um, shows that sometimes they want to show, um, they want to show just some text because something happened on the show. And um, interestingly is that uh, the whole thing went a bit viral in Twitter. And so people only click on the link and they have no idea what happens right now. So what they can also do, they can write text. So I can write the text in here. I just save it. And then after 10 seconds, it will update here. And they used it for like announcing it. We will start in 10 minutes. We will do whatever we want. And we didn't have this at the beginning, but after a couple of shows, we really realized, okay, that's something really interesting to just communicate with the people. Of course, you have Facebook and Twitter, but the people are already on the website, so you can, you can work there. Um, then you see actually this thumbs up and down voting. So how it worked is that um, they prepared all the votings because obviously they knew which talents will sing. They didn't know which one will win, but they knew which will sing. So they prepared all the polls in the beginning. We had a rehearsal where we tried the whole thing. And now, right now, Sarah would be on stage and I can go there and say, okay, do I like this or not? So I click on it and it refreshes. And if I do this on another screen, so I have another browser here, which is also locked out. I see the same poll as well and I vote for the same and you see here 51% and it's updated right now on the right side. So it not only updates the newest poll, it also updates the results. And you see during the show, it was really nice to see like the, the going up, like which is more in favor and then people started to tweet around and say, hey, please vote because they had fan clubs and all the stuff, obviously. So, and this all runs via the automatically updating of the, of the page. Um, yes, then maybe some more things we had on the website. Um, there was not only the possibility to show one poll, we had at the, in the last show, we had like six polls overall because multiple things happened at the same time. And another thing is what we did, we did some um, live interaction with the people because it was a live show. So basically the whole team, which consisted of three people using, like managing the site, we were at the, in, the, in the stadium where the whole thing happened. And as it is a live show, you cannot plan anything. And sometimes it happens, whatever, that somebody one of the um, talents lost their head while singing. So you could immediately create a poll and ask the people, what did you think about this? And that's something that is not able to do anywhere except via the website. So we had to do it really easily for the people to send out things because it's a matter of seconds to get the whole thing running. Below, we had some Twitter streams. Um, which basically is just a Twitter widget. We had a live chat where we did use discuss um, the, the chat system. We would have loved to use Facebook chat, but Facebook chat is abandoned, doesn't exist anymore. And then we had a live player and um, yes, and below actually was the normal page as we knew it before. So um, the second screen was just inserted between the front page because people knew the website and um, they wanted to go there and see the live stream. 
Yes. Any questions still here? Yes. Yes. Uh, are, was there been uh, there are any caching tools, uh, red, red tools because that, that has to be rendered each time? It's yes, I will come to the performance later. Sorry. It was one of the big parts, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, and obviously, as you see, the whole thing is responsive. So it's, um, I have an, iPhone, an iPhone here, so we have the whole thing also on an iPhone exactly the same because people used all kind of different devices and actually mobile devices was more than 50% because people are sitting in front of their TV with their iPad and with their iPhone or in the train they wanted to know what happens and as the show happened like two to three times per week and um, people still wanted to be updated and some of them actually really said okay actually I don't need to see the show anymore I can only like have my iPhone open, it automatically refreshes. I don't have to push anything at all. I just have all my information here. So you saw also here the say hello to TrupalCon is in there. So it automatically happens. Good. Um, let's go back to the presentation. So how we did this? Um, the whole thing was panels, um, which allowed the editors to be fully um, flexible with the system. I can show you this later. It's because they told us, well, we don't know yet what we want to show on the website. That's like the craziest as an agency. They come to you and say, well, we know we want to show videos, we want to show pictures, we want to show text, we don't, but we don't know yet why and how and whatever. So um, we use panels for this. Um, the updating happened via HX Paint. So um, it's a module on Drupal.org um, which basically injects and JavaScript and HX. Um, well, it injects some JavaScript which then calls HX and just you can tell them update every 10 seconds. And yes. And we use the normal um, Drupal poll system um, to basically make the up and down voting. So yes, let's see this. Um, so the front page is a panel, if you know the, the normal panel system. It's nothing surprising, come on. So it's some um, panels. It's actually really hard for an editor to use this. So what we use, we use the panels in place editor where he basically can select this and they can move around stuff. So they can say, I wanna whatever, I want to show this in here, I want to move around the live chat, etc. Which was really easily to um, explain to editors because they see stuff, they click a button, here you can edit and you move it around. And that was really easy for them to do. Um, the HX Paint, if we are actually checking out the, the code, we see this here. Somewhere down there. This is the egg checks pane. So instead of actually showing the content of this pane, it's, um, it's just a placeholder and it has some URLs and the JavaScript does nothing else than just query this every 10 seconds and load the content and show it in there. So you see here 10 seconds and it just shows you the content. So whenever you change the pane, the content of the pane it will automatically update the node and display in there. Um, yes, and the polls are just normal Drupal polls. So if we go in here, we see here that's an Umfrage in German and we just use the normal um, Drupal poll system. We had a yes, no that was defined. We don't need anything else because we wanted to make it really easily because as I said, people are actually watching the TV. So you can't ask them crazy questions or multiple, um, multiple questions they have to answer. So it needs to be really it's like yes, no, which makes it sometimes a bit hard for the editors to think about the question, what do we really ask them? But um, that was really um, the best. Um, and we just use the normal poll system so you can close some polls after, uh, after some time. This is also updated automatically. Um, yes. 
good. Now, talking about performance. As I said, we wanted to have the whole thing really fast um, and no registration needed. And we wanted to have the people fully anonymous. This means we don't need a Drupal session cookie because if we used Varnish for um, the whole caching, which would have taken really long to, um, to render the page every, um, specifically for every user. So we were searching really long how we could do this. And there is one really nice module, which is called Paul Anon on um, Drupal.org. And it basically changes the whole poll system to a cookie-based one. So this means when they, um, the Paul Anon system actually sends either the voting form with the up and down and the result at the same time to the browser. And then the browser decides, what do I show to the user? Is it either the polling or is it the result? And with this, you can everybody say the same thing. And basically, the browser <laughs> decides, what should I display? And he knows this while creating a cookie, which does not inflect the Varnish cache. So the Varnish ignores this cookie. And the user um, and the browser basically decided. So, Let's see how this works. Um, I have here a Chrome, and if we look into the cookie system, I see in the resources tab, I see a cookie, which is PA Paul Anonymous 489, which is a node ID, and this basically just says him, okay, yes, you have voted. So yes, if you know how the whole thing works, you basically remove this, you refresh the page, and you vote again. Um, but as I said, we really took the risk. We said, okay, we wanna try it out because this is the easiest and the fastest way to show any website at all. There are a lot of additional things you can do, like um, adding some hashes, etc. And we really thought about this and we said, we just gave it a shot. Because the whole project was, um, built like this that they came to us and said, look, we have these 10 shows. We don't know yet what we will do in the last show, but we know what we want to have in the first show. And every week there was a new show. So we built the site for the first show. We took the, the, all the things we knew from them and, we, and we, then we went to the second, the next, and the next, and the next. And one of them said, okay, let's try it out. If somebody finds out at the first show how it works, well, so we can fix it for the next one. And honestly, nobody ever found out how the whole thing works. Because the interesting thing is the whole website was only up for one hour per week. So all the script kiddies we are a bit um, worried about, they only had one hour to find out how the whole thing works. Of course, it's really security by obscurity, but at the end we needed to have a fast system and we didn't have a lot of time to implement and it worked out really well. Um, Another thing we were thinking about really long is if we should use a pulling or a polling um, system, or a push or pull system. So what happens right now here is that the browser goes every 10 seconds, he goes to the server, asks him, do you have something new for me? Do you have something new for me? Which if you have 10,000 people which do this at the same time, you have to be prepared for this. The other way would be that you actually push this to the browsers with WebSockets and Socket.io, that's really easily possible. The thing is, um, the voting here, we wanted to have updated all the time. And we didn't want it to have that the, every time you vote, that like basically that this changes a bit, that we send it to all users because there are 10,000 people voting at the same time. So you will push it 10,000 times to everybody because every time somebody votes, it pushes it out, which were we also worried about. So we said, if we just do a polling every 10 seconds, we can prevent this and we just cached the whole thing in Varnish. So one important thing, if you use Varnish by like a default config, there are some default configs around, Ajax is not cached. Ajax is, is excluded from any caching mechanism in Varnish. 
So you need to be aware that this happens and you need to change the configuration that Ajax call can be cached again. Because if you have 10,000 people polling every 10 seconds, your whole site will break, or unless you have a lot of servers for there. So the whole thing works like this, that every 10 seconds, every browser updates, and the Varnish cache is at nine seconds. So each of these panes are cached by Varnish. The first person which requests it basically makes a request to the backend. The result or the new voting is created, and then it's sent back to the Varnish, and then all people um, seeing this. Important to know is that um, there are a lot of people requesting at the same time. And as I said, we're talking about 10,000 people at the same time, all 10 seconds. So you can imagine it's 1,000 people per second. Generating the node took around 300 milliseconds. There is um, a possibility in Varnish to tell them if two people at the same time are requesting the same thing, only let the first one go back to the backend and the other one gets an old version. So it could have happened that maximum 20, min 20 seconds, the, the pain was still there, but only one person requested. So it looked really nice. We had a graph from the front end. At the front end, you see like endless amount of queries coming in. And at the back end, you see just every nine second, one single one, and then it was cached by Varnish. So that was really the success of the whole site was only possible with clever caching via Varnish. And um, yes. It actually happened to us that this button up here um, was something done via the redirect module, which allows you to do rise, uh, redirects. And the problem is it tells the Varnish to not cache. So what happened, um, the whole show had a break, a commercial break. And you can imagine what happens if you show the URL of your website before a commercial break. Everybody gets bored. They open the website. And on top there, there was no tickets bestellen, which means order tickets. It was win 10,000 Swiss francs. Yes, you can imagine. Everybody clicks there. Varnish, unfortunately, didn't cache the stuff. And yeah, so you see like the server load. I saw from 0% to 100%. I saw like 10, 50, and then it stopped. So yeah, so the site broke for like two minutes. But um, we had everybody there, like, all server management people, they were aware that the whole thing happened. I was there, one of my techies was there, so we were really fast, like fixing the stuff, we found it immediately and it worked. So yes, we were down for two minutes, but at the end not, nothing really happened. We found the bug in the module, we added more server for next, next week, and on, on the next week we had like triple of the traffic before, that was no issue at all. So one thing here, test your site really good for caching. To, because if you're here alone and you're clicking around, you will never see the stuff. There are some really good systems um, to test websites for performance, so you can tell them, please come with 10,000 users. And they start all kinds of servers in the cloud and they bang your website as fast as possible. And so that's really something, if you do a second screen, make somehow sure how many people there could get. And that's a really hard question. We didn't know, so we just, planned for a lot, wasn't enough, unfortunately, but um, yes. So coming back to the presentation, as I said, it's, um, it was fully anonymous. The updating was polling based and we used a lot of varnish in there. Another thing we had um, was a lot of caching itself because um, the, even that you have varnish, you still wanted to have the whole thing fast so we used all kind of the normal um, caching stuff, you know, from, um, from Drupal, which is entity cache, whatever. If you're interested in performance, there are a lot of presentations in here which talk about this as well. Um, yes, that's it. So, success. Um, the maximum we had was 1,000 hits per second. So, um, which was, we think was quite a lot. Um, Warnish definitely helped us out there. We had everything redundant. So two Warnish servers, multiple backends and all the stuff. Um, because you just wanna, don't want to rely on any single box. 
because hardware can die, hardware can burn, hardware can do whatever, and um, if this happens, you want to be ready. This also means that we had everybody in charge or can helping was on duty because the whole thing only runs for one hour or two hours and you just want to make sure that everybody knows that if something happens in the network, if something happens with the hardware, if something happens with, with, the, with the site, people are ready and can help. Even better, we were actually sitting at the, at the stage where the whole thing happened because then you know immediately what happens. We had over 5,000 votings per poll, which was um, quite successful because we didn't know how many people vote. I know Switzerland is small, but um, and actually the most interesting thing is that we had really similar results to the to the normal telephone voting. So as I said, the people afterwards had to phone call by the phone to actually vote. It was a bit hard to explain this to them at the beginning, but we succeeded and. Um, the percentage of the of the talents, like how many votes, was really close to like two to three percent differentiation, but nothing more, which showed us that the whole cookie-based thing was not hacked at all. Because if you would have seen one go really crazy high, and also um, that actually the second screen provides the same results as the old-fashioned telephone voting, so um, there is a new sh um, the voice coming up in the next year. So we're really thinking like, how could we use this somehow um, to actually integrate this into the normal voting mechanism. But as I said, there are lawyers which don't really like them. It's a bit hard, a bit crazy. Um, we will see what we can do there. Yes, are there any specific questions? I have one. Yeah. Yes, so we knew that um, when you have a TV show and you announce it, you will not have the same traffic at the end as in the beginning of the show. So we basically took the first two shows to load test the things as well. Because when you announce a TV show till people like, actually get addicted to it, it will take some time. And um, so we, one planning was, okay, we put a lot of servers in there way too many that we can measure the load during an actual show and then estimate between the first and the second show how much it went up and predict the end. It didn't work out at the, at the end because um, the, at, at The Voice it's like this that you have blind auditions which were, um, which were not live. So it was shown, it was everybody told it was live but it was not. And as it happens all the time in television. Um, so people couldn't actually go to the show because you couldn't buy any tickets. So we knew that the last three shows, which are live, which were fully live, um, that they attract more people. And this switch between non-live and live, we didn't know what happens, and it was like three times more. And we estimated like well, maximum double. Um, there, what what we used for load testing was there is a, a system which is called Blitz.io. And they do load testing from the cloud. So basically, you, um, you buy credits. And you can say, OK, please visit my website with whatever, 1,000 people, 5,000 people. And the interesting thing is you can start with zero and can slowly up to more and more, to more, and more requests. And it captures the response times. So you could see, because if you know, OK, it works really fast with zero and it works slow with 10,000, where does it happen? And Blitz.io tells you this. So they go slowly up, and, um, and at one point, the response time goes really bad, and you see this is at 4,000, and then you go in there and actually try to fix the stuff. Um, for us, um, we basically just had multiple Varnish servers. So to, because with 10,000 hits per second, you could reach the hardware limitations. So it wasn't actually the software which wasn't fast enough. We just wanted to have four servers to actually spread all the requests over different things. Um, there's another tool called um, Siege, which is, let me show this. If I find it, Siege. 
an HTTP stress tester. And it is able to make like, depends on the server you run it on, to make like 1,000 requests per second from one single server. So I basically just asked all my DevOps friends to run up their servers and just hit the website. And we, we, we saw what happened. And um, that was one, one way, because we knew that we basically just have to handle one specific thing, which is that when you actually click on the poll, it makes, it makes an Ajax post to the server, and this is not cached, because you need to capture the voting. So we put a lot of people on this. So we wanted to know how many people at the same time can vote. And this was never the same amount as actually the visiting. But as only one person can visit once every around 60 seconds, that was, um, was, this number was really less necessary than actually just people viewing the page. So um, I would say you need to really know what your website is about just like trying to measure the front page or a single node doesn't really help. You need to know what actually happens when the people click on the polling or on the, on the vote button. And with this, measure your, um, your performance analysis. Because Varnish will be fast all the time. Any other questions? Good point. Um, obviously, I, I need to say yes now, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was really the first time that um, we did something at Swiss Television for this. Um, one thing I didn't mention is that the results of the voting was also there had like um, a backstage room. So after the show happened, or like after the talent was singing. They made. Um, they went to the backstage and they had a, a moderator there and like interview and talked with whatever with friends of them, whatever. And there was a huge screen there, and they could show the results of the online voting in there. So that was already one value. We we did some additional things, and um, this um, we're not super sure, but um, there was once a situation where. Um, one talent was in front of the other in the online, and in the, in, in the telephone voting, it was totally different. And after we showed the, the results of the online voting in the television, the phone calling changed. So they, they know how many people call at the same time. And as you showed them like a sneak peek, how could it be the phoning changed. So probably a lot of people said, oh no, my talent is going to lose. And everybody called there, and they changed it. So it's really hard to say because it's just a matching of the measuring, like what actually happened. But we saw that after we showed this, the telephone changed. Yes? You have mentioned that there were actually people visiting the, this online site from Twitter who were not watching TV. Yes, yes. People to go. Um, yes, there is. Um, Switzerland is not really big in time in terms of Twitter, so we had a lot of people saying that, um, like, oh, my timeline is full of Twitter, uh, full of SRF The Voice this evening, and then they went to the website and they saw what happened. And the thing is, you can only click on the live stream, so you don't even need to open the TV. And um, again, it's you cannot measure this. But a lot of people told us, they, hey, I hear the voice all the time on my Twitter timeline. So they went there. Actually, one interesting thing was that um, the, the show, the last show, took so long that they had some issues with the program. And after the winner was announced, the, um, there was a, a commercial break. So it went on viral on Twitter, like, ooh, ooh she won, whatever. And um, people opened the TV and there was a commercial break. So you didn't know like what happened right now. So we used the website to announce on the website with this text thingy you saw, we could announce who was winning at the same time. And that, that was interesting. And actually this brings me to another thing. Um, we, as you know, in the past we had analog TV and they could 
by second tell you how long is the delay between something is captured in the show as it is actually happening and the TVs at the people at home, and usually that's some seconds. The problem is now with IPTV, with live streams, with HTTP live streaming, etc., it can take up to one minute that like something is captured. And the interesting thing was that the website was faster in announcing who has won than the actual television, which ended up in like a big discussion because we were sitting there at the stage and then the 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 speaker announced and she won and we were like we had two buttons because there were only two people at the end. It was like who won? And then people started to discuss about Twitter and then some people said, Hey, I'm still in the commercial break. So um, yes, but that's a, an issue you cannot really fix because different systems have different delays. I guess for next time we just need to wait a bit longer and like make a delay in there, whatever. Yeah, because your website is too fast. Yes. Any other questions? Um, this project was a bit special because they came way too late to actually do this, as usual. Um, it's not our normal um, system. So usually as a company we try to have like all the techies involved. So we do like two weeks of sprints. We don't call them sprint, but it's something like a sprint. And then everybody works on this. The thing is, as it was really close to the whole show, we did the whole thing basically on two weekends with three people. But as I said, it's really hard to measure because um, we did the whole thing on two weekends for, um, for the first show. And then you were actually sitting at the show and sometimes because there was a rehearsal all the time. So the first rehearsal, the show wasn't Saturday, the live shows. The first rehearsal was on Friday and then after one it was on, on Saturday morning. And after, between the rehearsal and the live side we did some adaptions because you saw, oh, in this show there is something really special that two people sing together and the website was not able to show two poles at the same time. So you adapted this and you tested it. One thing we had with there is you need to be aware that the people don't update their site. So um, even they can visit the site and it updates everything really nicely. The two things you can change, or actually three, is the HTML around, the JavaScript, and the CSS. And we had one issue that, um, so as it is, you adapt something on Saturday afternoon, you test it, it works really well, but um, we had like all the devices there to develop at, at, um, at the place. And then during the show, you realize that some CSS is not working or whatever, it just doesn't look nice. And then everybody comes to you and says, like, can you change it? And I say, like, yes, I can, but all the people, they will never refresh the page. So a lot of people said like on Twitter, well, it doesn't look good, but you cannot really force them to refresh. So what we added was the red button which basically on, on every Ajax request, there was a possibility to add a flag and there was a JavaScript in there. If this flag is set, the page will refresh, which was like the, and you could see this on, and we used it once for, for testing actually. And, and then you really see like everybody refreshing the page. The only bad thing is the live stream which runs in there will refresh. So that's you, but at the end we really needed it because it could have happened that you have a JavaScript error or whatever, and then the people need to refresh. So that's the red button, whatever. Or you maybe have a system which actually allows you to replace JavaScript on the fly, but just refreshing the browser was the easiest. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fully responsive. It's fully responsive. So, um, yeah, you can see it here. No, we didn't want to have an M version. Um, yeah, because it was just easier. Of course, you need to remove some parts of the website, and um, but that's normal responsive things. Yes. Yeah. No. The live stream um, was done by, as, by, by the television because they already have a live stream on their website. So basically they just needed to allow us to use a live stream on this URL and that's it. And then they handle it and that's handled by Alchemy and things and so. Kind of and they didn't go for the 
Yes, yes, and also the device handling also happened in the iframe. So we just needed to show an iframe code. Yeah? Uh, where do you see the, the challenges or chances for second screen projects uh, where the, the users can actually influence the, the, the story of the show? Good point. Um, from a technical point of view, I don't really see an issue. Um, it's, um, it's buildable with Drupal especially because all the modules are there. You can really easily cache the whole things. So it's like the tool set is there. What I saw is basically the people which are not used to because the whole show is done by people which are double the age as I am. And that's the biggest issue. So they are not, they don't want to open to this. You know, you have to like all, like having actually showing the result of the website was already a big discussion, should we do this or not? Um, so I think that's more an, an issue of the, of the people which actually, do we allow them because you can't control it. It's like, you know, in the past you could, you did your reps, you did your show and that was all in. And everybody that influenced the website you could talk to. But now suddenly you have a crowd of people which could decide so it's relatively hard to get the people there and say and open, say, okay, let's let's do this. But it's still on this project it was still that um most of the main things were decided. And the only thing that the crowd could have done is basically show the, the results on the on the screen. But I think it's a really um um it's it's a it's a chance to open to make the things more interesting. Because television is a medium that only sends, but the back channel is via the website. So you could make this back channel via, the, via a second screen that people can decide whatever and um, change the show based on things. And interestingly, it happens most of the time in, in kids' shows right now. This is, looks like it's, it's a bit the playground of televisions that they um, open this in like TV shows for kids or like younger people that they can um, go to the website and decide something like which video clip would you like to see next or other things. And actually one thing I, th I think it's not only for televisions, it's basically every event you can add a second screen somehow. So one thing we're, we're talking about is sport events that actually uh, at the point where you are, um, you can do something as well. So um, let's see whatever you have. Um, uh, one thing was the Red Bull fluke talk. Maybe you heard about this. Um, so that, that would be something interesting that you can like, because they also have a jury and um, they say like how good they were. So like the creativity. So why not let the people actually vote which visiting there. And of course you can't let them open or uh, like show whatever a number but they have an iPhone in their hand or, or a phone, so they could vote directly there and use it as another jury member, the crowd, and do this, because the technical things are all here. Yeah, if there are no any questions, that's it? I have one. Yeah, you have one. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, mechanism, you yes. Yeah, at the end it was a money discussion as most of the things. So uh, they came to me and I asked like what can we make it secure? And I told them there are different levels of of, of security. And um, it's just that the differentiation between having locked in users and locked out users in Drupal is crazy because one of them is no PHP involved and the other one is like handling every page request. So it would have ended up in a lot of performance optimizations, a lot of servers more, and also usability issues. And all these three together were mostly because they had a budget and I told them, look, if you want to have a super secure voting, 80% of your budget will be used for this and you can use 20% for the normal website and if it wouldn't have looked like this, it wouldn't have to be responsive. 
So at the end, the decision was there. And um, yeah, luckily, as I said, it didn't happen at all. And we still would have some possibilities. So we measured, for example, the amount of votings per IP address. And you know a bit the IP address of the big companies. So sometimes we saw a lot of people voting from one single IP address. So then we checked it up and sometimes you see, well, that's like a big company and looks like the people are sitting in the evening there and watching tele television. So you leave them. But if it would have been a private IP address, we could have blocked it. And um, of course, if he's clever enough, there's a way how to scramble the IP address and so on. But it was more like we, we looked at it as, as a game and saying, look, that's our website. If you're going to break it, we will put more on top of it. If So that's it. And nothing happened. But definitely, yeah. So we're talking with lawyers to see what can we do. And that's the first thing. Because just obscurity is not enough. Yes, so thank you very much. If you have any more questions, I'm here around. We have a booth over there. Talk to me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>